Hello everyone, I hope and pray that you're doing well. Uh, here you can see I'm at the Us Chapel. Uh, most of you know by now that the Us Chapel was vandalized recently. Uh, fire was started inside by the cross. Uh, caused quite a bit of damage actually. And uh, maybe like uh, you, when, uh, when I heard what had happened, I was uh, pretty disappointed, pretty disappointed, um, angry, uh, maybe even feeling a little bit vengeful. Um, uh, you know, vandalism is just such a, you know, such a senseless crime. But then I started to hear some of the stories, right? Uh, how the person who uh, put out the worst of the fire with a fire extinguisher, they're just passing by and they, they were here at the right time, at the right place. Or the fire, the fire department showing up uh, to, to mop up. Uh, people offering to help fix the chapel. Uh, gifts of money and, and wood. Just a couple vehicles. Gifts of money and wood and uh, roofing and painting. You see behind me, they're doing some of the roofing right now. Um, thousands of people, um, you know, viewing and reacting to the story of the fire on Facebook. And, and you know, I guess in some ways I'll admit that, you know, here I thought it was just, you know, a little kind of quaint, us the Pioneer Chapel, not making much of a difference, uh, not really having much of an impact. Um, but the stories that came out of just how meaningful uh, the chapel has been to people uh, over the years. Just, you know, the stories just blew my mind. And uh, I guess I'm saying, you know, also in a small way that uh, there's, there's a bit of a, a silver lining, right? That, that this place matters, that, that what it represents matters. Uh, even, you know, even to those folks that aren't so churchy. And then I thought about that and I compared it to my disappointment and my anger and uh, even my desire for vengeance, um, you know, the vengeance towards the, the perpetrator of the, the vandalism. And, you know, then connected that to what the place represents, right? It represents the gospel of Jesus Christ and the message of freedom. It, it represents, you know, kind of an oasis, right? This, you know, this us chapel, right? Uh, it represents, you know, also deliverance uh, and rescue from hurt and heartache. Now, I'll, I'll be honest, I still want justice. I still hope that the, the perpetrator repents, turns 180 degrees and, you know, works to make things right. I still want that. But in many ways, in many senses, uh, those who value this place value also a God of second chances because he's given us second chances. And so the Us Pioneer Chapel has a story of survival through flood. You know, this is, you know, uh, you know, the story of the Bible, you know, that survived through a flood, you know, back in, I think, 1936, right? And now the Us Pioneer Chapel Cross has a story of its own survival through fire, right? So fire, through fire and flood, uh, things have survived here. And uh, the message of the cross remains, right, that God is a God of second chances, uh, for you and for me, God's a second God of chance. God's a God of second chance for you and for me, and and even for and especially for people who set fire to abandoned churches. Uh, I know that at the dedication of this building, as well as at the 50th anniversary of the dedication of this building a couple years ago, there were some words from Isaiah 40 that were read. I'm just going to read them uh, again uh, from uh, from this. Uh, Bible. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The, the grass withers and the flowers fade, uh, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And so the word of God and God's justice and God's mercy stand forever. And so thanks be to God for rescuing us, rescuing us all. Uh, may the peace of Christ be with you all.